What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to be recording again um, because in celebration of the 20th anniversary of one of my favorite gaming companies, Word Mill Games, we are going to be doing some tabletop role playing today. Yes, this is like, it's not Dungeons and Dragons. It's like Dungeons and Dragons, but it is not. Um, and the product that we're celebrating today is Mythic. Now this, uh, Product was released 20 years ago in 2003, and when it was, it revolutionized role playing by allowing anyone to play any role playing game solo. So the the core of Mythic is a game master emulator. You may know that uh, RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons are usually played um, between a game master who runs the game and a series of players um, that together play the game. And this is basically the core of this is an AI that will serve as the Game Master for you. Um, there's a follow-on product called Mythic Game Master Emulator that is just the uh, the Oracle or the, the AI for the GM. Um, and they actually just released a second edition of that on DriveThru RPG. Uh, you can find that there. I'll put the link in the description. But as a part of the 20th anniversary, the, the designer of Mythic uh, took it upon themselves, they challenged themselves to reduce Mythic in scope down to one page. And um, yeah, I have this right here. So this is the 25th volume of Mythic Magazine. This is a magazine um, that basically just supports the Mythic ecosystem, which is a really, a really rich ecosystem of solo role-playing tools. This is all um, geared towards people who want to play role-playing games solo. It's really cool. And uh, in this issue, the first article provides us with the one-page Mythic Game Master Emulator. And I cannot explain how excited I am that this exists. Um, this is the spirit of Mythic. It's compressed down into a single page. Um, yeah, everything's here. We have the fate chart. We have uh, a description table, and this is really this is really all we need. And you may be looking at this like, what playing a playing a role playing game solo fate chart? What is he talking about? We'll get into it. Just uh, all you need to know right this second is that this one page will allow us to play virtually any role playing game, absolutely solo. It's really exciting. Okay, so to keep things simple, this is my very first time to record um, playing a tabletop role-playing game. Um, for the, the RPG itself, I decided to go with something um, equally simple. So instead of, uh, instead of a big, complex game like Dungeons & Dragons, we're going to kick things off with a more simple game. This is Dark Fort. Now, Dark Fort... Um, it's produced by Pell Nilsson and Johan Noor, um, pardon me for the pronunciation, but uh, these two developed the really popular game, a Merc Borg, which I believe Merc Borg actually means Dark Fort, and um, as far as I can tell, uh, Dark Fort inspired Merc Borg. This uh, actually says a slightly adapted and translated version of the solo micro game that became Merc Borg. Merc Borg. Grab a handful of dice, a pencil, and paper and begin your perilous delve into the Dark Fort. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is what we're going to be doing in um, today's session. Let's kick things off by creating a character. So when you play Dark Fort, um, I mean the, the whole role-playing game, it's only, it's only three pages long. So to keep it really simple, um, you don't actually create a unique character. You play as the character Cargoont. Um, so I'm going to, hopefully you can see this, I'm going to take my first note. This is going to be the character sheet for Cargoont. He is... The Catacomb Rogue. Cargunt the Catacomb Rogue. Now, this RPG takes place in the campaign setting that eventually became the game, Merc Borg's default campaign setting. The Dying World is a horrible place. It is an abysmal, abysmal location um, where the world is ending. Um, just to summarize, a an all-knowing basilisk has predicted the end of the world, and everything the basilisk says comes true. So in this world, in this dark world um, of cutthroats and disease and horrible beings, horrible monsters, and, and death, Everyone knows that the uh, the fate of the world is sealed. 
It's really awful. It's a horrible place. Um, so this is this the dying world is where uh, Cargunt comes from. So this is this is all we really know that he's a catacomb rogue. Um, this t- tells us a little bit about him already. Um, you know, he is he's a rogue. He's some sort of cutthroat that uh, is essentially delving into catacombs, um, which you know religious. Uh, burial sites to to find wealth to find money it's a hard world um so he's trying to he's trying to make a living uh by by grave robbing so yeah that is that is the background that we get uh for the character cargoons now we're going to begin the game with 15 hit points um and there is a this game is primarily uh, centered around combat. We're going to try to throw some extra role-playing opportunities into the game um, with uh, Mythic, with one-page Mythic, and this is going to be fun because this game is, you know, very light on uh, the built-in role-playing. Um, you kind of have to bring the role-playing to the table yourself, and so we're going to we're going to um, exercise the power of Mythic um, by seeing what it can uh, come up with. Um, you know, combining the two. So I've already, I've already, uh, I've practiced, I've tried this once, and uh, I came up with some, um, or I, I ran into some very interesting scenarios. So this, this should be interesting. Okay, so Cargoons, I'm getting ahead of myself. Cargoons has 15 hit points. So I'll mark here that he has, he's currently at 15 HP, and his max HP is also 15. All right, I'll try to make sure you can see this. Um, and 15 plus D6 silver. Silver is the standard currency of the dying world. So I will roll with this epic dice tower that my wife Malachi got for me. All right, so um, 4, 15 plus 4 is 19. So Cargunt currently is sitting at 19 silver, um, which is an okay amount. Now, uh, Next, oh, we may carry unlimited items. This is a, uh, you know, gross simplification um, for the sake of a really simple game, uh, which is fine. The The goal here is not to really manage resources other than health. Yeah, your hit points is really the only resource that you're going to be managing. Um, health and silver, I should say. Those are the key resources. All right, so we're going to start with uh, one weapon and one miscellaneous item um, to help us out, which is going to be uh really cool so in my um in my prior attempt at playing this game uh, i actually rolled the armor which uh, proves to be very useful so i'm kind of hoping that i roll armor again but we'll start with the weapon this is going to be a d4 we're either going to get a warhammer a dagger a sword or a flail all right so the roll is one so we uh we rolled a warhammer all right so i will just keep um an informal list of everything that Cargunt owns. A Warhammer, which is going to do d6 damage. However, there is no bonus to attack. Um, so I will likely be trying to save up for a sword at some point um, to get that plus one to the uh, to the attack roll. Okay, so we're kicking off the game with a Warhammer. You can imagine Cargunt um, wielding this heavy hammer. Uh, and also another oh d4 we'll roll it right this is a three this is a scroll summon weak daemon now um we have a note the daemon helps you for d4 fights and he deals d4 damage okay that is interesting okay so we have a daemon i'll note this and I guess I'll put D4 to note that he does D4 damage. Um, and I'll do I'll just do tally marks. We'll tally um, every time we use the daemon for a fight. That is pretty cool. So this is going to help us get off the ground, um, hopefully help us win our first four uh, fights. It says he helps you for D4 fights, dealing D4 damage. Interesting. So I don't know off the cuff whether... Um, he only deals damage if you hit. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume um, the more difficult choice that this daemon um, will only uh, deal damage if we actually are able to hit our opponent. So he's just gonna help us deal extra damage in combat. Sick. All right, Cargunt, the catacomb rogue, has a warhammer and a scroll that would allow us to summon a weak daemon. Okay, so we have the the scroll actually. So I'm gonna know that this is a scroll and we have not cast it yet. So we can save this um, for a more opportune moment. 
That is excellent. All right, so let's uh, you know before before we kick things off, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Mythic. Um, so this is uh, the super simple Mythic Game Master Emulator. There are three aspects to this game. There are basically three things that we can do. Um, the first is we can ask the game master a question. Now, normally, if you were playing a role playing game with a game master, you would ask any questions that you have to the game master. So, um, is there a monster in this room? The game master can tell you yes or no. Um, you know, do I do I hit my opponent? You could ask the game master, and he could tell you yes or no. Um, is there is there a is this door locked? The game master can tell you yes or no. And so the the core of Mythic is the fate chart. This is a table that you roll on um, to get answers uh, to yes no questions um, from the the game master. Um, and I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see how this works. So ask the game master. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is form a question. This is a yes or no question. We're going to assign odds to the question. And this is the odds that the question's result is a yes. Um, and the, the odds are common language phrasing. And this is really important because this, this really common uh, language, words like likely, very likely, very unlikely, impossible, or certain, these are words that you can apply to any role-playing game um, that you're playing. And so this is, this is a big reason why Mythic is considered universal. Um, you can really easily apply this concept to um, any, any game that you're playing. So step one, form a question. Step two, assign odds to the question. Then you check the chart. You roll a D100, which we have here a tens dice and we have a ones place dice for rolling D100s. And you check it, uh, you compare it with the table. And so this is gonna give you a yes, a no, an exceptional yes, or an exceptional no. And uh, that's part of the fun thing with Mythic is uh, anytime you get an exceptional an exceptional yes or no, uh, it kind of it bends things in an interesting way. It's really fun. Okay, so there are still um, two more uh, kind of things that you can do with the one page mythic. Um, one is uh, you can generate random events and the other is you can discover meaning. Um, now a random event um, is generated anytime you roll doubles when asking uh, the game master a question. So anytime you, uh, anytime you roll a double you're going to generate a random event and the way you do that is by uh, using the third kind of action, um, discover meaning. So discover meaning is a way to get more detail about your adventure without asking a yes or no question. So not everything in the game, in, in a game that you're playing, can um, be, uh, not every question about the game you're playing can be answered with a clean yes or no um, question. So the discover meaning action is basically rolling on this uh, one of these meaning tables. So we have an action meaning table and we have a description meaning table um, that you can use. And discovering meaning is simply rolling a word on the table and seeing if that word answers your que your question. If it if it doesn't, if it's not enough information, then you roll again on the meaning table until you have enough words that put together you can interpret into an answer to your question. Um, now the important uh, the important thing here is that this is interpreted. The words rolled are prompts, so you don't have to strictly adhere to the words that you roll. Um, they're just supposed to inspire an answer to you, and the hope is that they inspire some off-the-wall thought that you would not have originally come up with, and this is what makes um, playing the game solo exciting. Um, you know, when you play with a game master, they have all of the information, they have the twists, um, and you know that, that you don't know in advance, you don't get to know until the GM springs them on you. And this, this is how Mythic uh, kind of simulates the GM throwing, uh, throwing curveballs at you. It's through this random event process. But the discover meaning um, action you can kind of take at any time. Anytime you have a question about the game that you're playing, you can, uh, you know, roll for an answer on the on the discover meaning tables, and uh, together these three things. This is this is all you need. Um, if you if you if you buy the Mythic Game Master emulator, it is it is very robust. Um, it's it's honestly it's exceptional. It is a it's a big collection of tools to make your solo role-playing experience amazing, truly incredible. Um, this is 
the bare minimum of what you need to, to move the game forward. And it actually, it's really cool how powerful this is. We're going to start, we're going to start by asking Mythic a question. What is Cargoons like? Describe Cargoons to me. Now, my expectations for Cargoons, if he is a grave robber in this horrible world, is that he is this, you know, kind of a dirty, um, you know, if he, and he's wearing a warhammer. He's probably, pr probably pretty strong. He probably knows um, that there uh, is danger in the catacombs. Um, you know, we could assume that this is his first time grave robbing if we wanted, since we're we're going to kick off the game at level one. I should mark that Cargoons is uh, level one. Go ahead and make sure. I need to put this in a spot where you can see. Well. His level is one to start the game. So we can say that he's just starting his journey, but uh, strong and dirty, you know, is a starting point. But I, I want a little more. I'm going to start by rolling on the description meaning table. We're going to do this together. So I'm going to roll. And I rolled a four. So he is beautiful. Okay, so Kargunt is uh, handsome. He may be dirty. He may be uh, strong or burly, but he is, I guess, a, a good-looking individual. What else can we get out of this? Um, zero nine he is clean okay so he's not dirty that is very interesting so um we can we can interpret this as meaning that cargoons has not yet um cargoons is pure he has not yet been kind of soiled by um, his actions in the world um yeah that's that's super interesting cargoon is uh he's handsome and he's clean he might be pure uh pure of heart um he might be turning to uh he might be entering the catacombs out of curiosity, out of a, a, a desire for adventure, more than just desperation. This, you know, just just these two words alone kind of uh, change my perception of cargoons. Okay, so let's. Uh, why don't we get started with the game? So, the first thing we're going to do. So uh, the game is played by delving into catacombs, um, surviving the horrors, collecting money, and essentially, if you can, let me scroll for you. You level up if you do one of the following. If you can explore 12 rooms and survive and earn at least 15 points, then you level up. A point is given to you when you um, when you defeat a monster, you earn uh, points. And when you uh, solve a riddle uh, correctly, those are two different ways to, uh, to earn points in the game. So if you can explore 12 rooms and survive and earn at least 15 points, then you'll level up. Um, if you can collect at least 40 silver, then you can uh, return the silver to poor people in ruined Vosteland, Vosteland homes. Um, if you can do that, you can also level up. So this is kind of our object of the game. And then um, when every result... Well, okay, so when you level up, you roll a d6 and you scratch one of these six results off the list. Um, and it's, a, it's some kind of a boon uh, that enhances your character as you play the game. And then uh, when every result on the list is scratched, when you reach level 7, you retire and remain in your cottage or castle until the seventh misery occurs and everything you know blackens and burns. Congratulations. So this is a reference to the, um, the, uh, the end of the world that is impending. So yeah, the goal of the game is essentially for us to, uh, to delve until we hit level 7, at which point we presumably have earned enough wealth and renown to retire comfortably. And really, whose goal in life is not that, right? Okay, so um, that being said, Cargoon's actions in this game primarily is going to consist of delving into catacombs and trying to brave the horrors within. So we're going to start off by drawing a room of any size or form where D4 doors lead further in any direction. So the D4 also determines um, it's the number of doors and it's uh, whether w which one of these things are in the first room. Okay, so why don't I go ahead and roll one. We have one door in this room. Okay, I'm going to make the entrance at the top of the map. And why don't we make this a cool kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, this kind of like octagon-shaped room. Um, let's see, what is in this entrance? First off, is the okay. Let's let's ask Mythic a question. I wanna I wanna envision um, Cargoons entering this catacomb. Um, is the door 
Is the entrance to the catacomb this large stone door that just, you know, kind of creepily, uh, you know, is, is pushed open um, to, to enter the catacomb? Do we have this large, imposing stone door? I'm going to say it's likely and roll. So we get an 11. Oh, that is quite interesting. Okay, so an 11 in the first, first off, 11 is an exceptional yes. So yes, the entrance is this massive um, stone doorway that maybe has a symbol on the front. Um, let's see what kind of symbol is on the front. I'm going to roll on the description tables. What do we have on the front? 23. We have... A disagreeable. What do we have? I cannot see the roll. 45. A disagreeable incomplete. Ooh, interesting. Um, 92. And small. Disagreeable. Why don't we say that there is some kind of like small goblin okay so the the first thing i'm thinking of that's disagreeable and small in this game is a goblin um and it's incomplete so let's say that there are um uh, like engraved goblins on the front of this large stone door some depiction of goblins maybe uh maybe swarming a town there's just this horrible horrible cover um engravement on the uh on the door leading into the catacomb that maybe depicts something that happened to a nearby town. Maybe uh, maybe this goblin attack um, led to this catacomb being needed. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why that could have happened. But whatever the case, um, yes, there is a giant stone door. It has goblins uh, <laughs> engraved in the front. And as Cargunt, the clean, handsome catacomb rogue. Uh, pushes this large stone door open, a random event occurs. Because we rolled doubles, we rolled our, we rolled our first double, um, it was 11. Um, so what we're going to do is discover meaning on the action table to see what happens as we enter the first room of the catacomb. 90. A setback. Okay, this sounds like some sort of uh, creature. Our interpretation, um, because this is such a small role-playing game, is going to kind of uh, you know focus in on the elements of the game that are available to us, which are primarily uh, items. There's a few NPCs and monsters, so a setback sounds like an obstacle. This could be a trap, or it could be, um, or it could be a monster, of course. Let's. Uh, you know, that's enough. We we have a setback. Why don't we ask Mythic? Is this a monster? Uh, I'm going to say that it's likely that our setback is a monster in the first room. 27. That is a yes. Yes, there is a monster in the first room. And just to... Let's back things up for a moment. We rolled a 1, which was you find a random D6 item. Okay, so there's a... If this random event had not occurred, uh, we would have only found uh, a random item in the room. However, with this random event, we're going to find a monster in this first room. Which is pretty, uh, pretty cool. Uh, I, I like combat in this game, so that's kind of fun. Way to start things off. There are two kinds of monsters. There are weak monsters, and then there are tough monsters. Um, let's ask: Is this a tough monster? I don't know. Let's uh, let's make it a fifty-fifty. So, is the is the monster in the entrance a tough monster? Uh, no, and this is a fifty-fifty. This is just a no. So it's not a tough monster, it's a weak monster. So Cargunt comes upon a, um, a weak monster in the first room. Let's ask, what is this room like? What does it look like? So we, we just pushed open the stone doorway um, that had these crazy looking goblins engraved on the cover. 92, this room is s small. Okay, so I mean, the room looks small. Maybe it feels claustrophobic. Um, Maybe this tells us that Cargunt is feeling claustrophobic. He's nervous as he's pushing open what is likely his first uh, his first catacomb to delve into. Let's get another word, though, um, to learn a little more. 72. Peaceful. Okay, so Cargunt pushes open the stone doorway, and he's feeling nervous. He's feeling it's claustrophobic, and it's it's quiet. The room is quiet. And as he descends down the steps out of the the darkness of the room there comes a weak monster it is a catacomb 
cultist. So there is a cultist in the corner of the room, just crouched, crouched down in the corner. What was he? What was he doing when we entered the room? So uh, the cultist is in the room. What is he already doing as the uh, as Cargood enters? He is eighty four. PC. Okay, he's waiting for. Maybe he saw. Maybe he he realized somehow that Cargunta was coming. So the PC is the player character. That's me. Um, let's let's give it another let's give it another word and see. So we have eleven. Another random event. Uh, oh no no. This is on the discover meaning table. So we don't roll a random event uh, when we're rolling on the 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 meaning table. Okay, change. So change PC. Um, yeah. The 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 simplest interpretation of this, I guess is to oh, maybe he okay so change might be him taking a hiding place so he hears Cargunt coming when the door pushes open and he whatever he was doing he you know he stows away he hides against the wall in the corner and as Cargunt makes his way down the staircase um this cultist jumps out lashes out with a dagger um now i believe the cultist was holding a dagger because um we can see here catacomb Catacomb Cultist does D4 damage. Um, a dagger also does D4 damage, so we're just going to assume this Cultist lunges from the from the corner um, at Cargoon with his dagger, and the fight is on. Okay, so how combat works in um, Dark Fort? It's really really simple. Every monster is worth a certain amount of points. Now, we learned earlier that to level up, we need to collect 15 points. So the cultist is worth 3 points if we are able to um, to kill it. But the, the points serve as another purpose. This is also a um, to-hit dice roll. So let's see if it says here... There are weak and tough monsters. To hit, roll a d6 and tie or surpass the monster's points. If successful, it takes weapon damage. A failure means your hit. Armor absorbs d4 damage. You earn a slain monster's points. Anyone with 0 HP or less dies. You can try to flee a fight, taking d4 damage and leaving the room unexplored. Yeah, so com combat's really simple. We roll a d6 to see did we hit our opponent or did they hit us. Um, so yeah, the, the cultist, uh, we have to roll a 3 to hit, anything under that, and we get hit. He does d4 damage, we do d6 damage with Cargoon's, um Warhammer, and uh, the cultist has 6 HP, we have 15 HP. So the odds are certainly in our favor. So the, the cultist lunges, let's go ahead, and this is something that I like to do. Once again, this is a really simple uh, role-playing game, so to kind of... Um, to kind of stretch things out and make it more meaningful and epic. Um, I'm going to make a heavy use of One Page Mythic um, to kind of describe what's going on. So let's describe uh, what the combat feels like. Um, so 93, this combat is strange. So the the cultist lunges and, and maybe is off balance. Um, Cargunt wasn't expecting it. He's, he's taken aback. He's off balance. There's this strange kind of cadence to their their blows. Maybe the, the cultist slashes and Cargunt, you know, almost falls over and he he returns with a with a heavy blow with the Warhammer and he hits. He connects with the Warhammer to the cultist. Okay. So we just rolled a four, which means that we hit the cultist. Now we need to roll again for damage, which in our case, with the Warhammer, is a D6. So Cargoon swings the Warhammer, he connects with the cultist, and deals six damage. This is a telling, crushing blow. Maybe it impacts directly to the, the side of the head and bludgeons the cultist. The cultist goes down in one clean blow. Cargoon is is panting. Remember, he was clean. He was, you know, this is his first time uh, delving into a catacomb. Um, he was not prepared to be ambushed right when he walked through the door. I imagine Cargunt is is panting. His warhammer, his his warhammer is covered in blood. The cultist hits the ground. It's a horrible, horrible moment for him. Let's see. Is Car is Cargunt, um does he have a little mental moment of panic? Let's let's get a little more about his personality. So I'm going to ask the question to Mythic. Um, does Cargunt have take a moment to breathe and calm down because he is somewhat panicking? 
So 58, uh, the, my odds were 50-50, pardon me. 58, that's a no. Cargunt, um, his resolve is tested, but he uh, he pulls through. Um, he understands, you know, he kind of comes to this realization of the seriousness of what he's doing, but he's not... He's not really um, he's not really bothered. He's not panicking. Um, he he just kind of reaches this this newfound understanding um, of how serious this is going to be. Okay, so Kargunt is standing over the dead cultist. Let's go ahead and give him some points. So we need to track Kargunt's two things. We need to track his points and his rooms explored. So we're gonna have rooms. Okay, those are two metrics we're going to track. So killing the cultist, uh, we get three points. So we're now at three. That is out of 15 points that we need. Now, um, when you roll, let's see, a weak monster, if you kill it, the room is explored. So um, killing the monster, we have now explored the first room. So we'll increment our rooms to one. Now, don't forget, there was an item in this... Uh, there's an item in this room. Let's roll for the item. So if we go to entrance, one is you find a random D6 item. Yeah, not a scroll, an item. Okay, so let's uh, let's roll a D6 and see what Cargoon finds. Let's hope it's something good. Six, we keep rolling sixes. Um, this is a cloak of invisibility. That is exciting. Cloak of invisibility okay so there is a note about that avoid d4 fights while acquiring all monster points both items soon become unusable but can be sold okay so that's really cool so we can sell oh either the the daemon scroll or the uh, the cloak of invisibility Interesting. So we can sell it. Maybe instead of using, I don't think it'd be fair to be able to to buy. So you can buy these items from a store in the game, and it seems like you could game the system by buying the item, using it, and selling it back. I'm gonna say that if you choose to not use the item, you can sell it for its gold, and or its silver. And maybe that's uh maybe that's worth it sometimes if you're trying to hit 40 silver. Okay, so whatever the case, we now have the Scroll of Daemon, the Warhammer, and a Cloak of Invisibility, and it will allow us to avoid D4 fights. So let's see how many, um, let's see for how many fights this is going to help us out. That is a two. All right, a two. So um, we'll, you know, I'll put uh, Cloak of Invisibility two. Um, yeah, so we know that this is going to allow us, if we want, to sneak past two fights. Um, yeah, and we'll get to, to, to move through the room, and we get the room explored, and we get the monster's points without having to actually fight it. That is really cool. It's actually kind of a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to put in this room, um, I'm going to put a note, uh, Cultist was here, just so we can remember. And now that we've explored this room, why don't we move on? Cargoont with his uh, Warhammer. No armor, um, so it's really scary when that dagger comes at him. Um, it can really hurt. He explores another room. Okay, so I'm going to move over to the right side of this page. And we have, uh, there are three aspects to um, the dungeon, uh, to the dungeon crawl. So first we have the entrance. So we draw a room whatever of whatever shape we want with X number of rooms and the item that we rolled. From now on, roll on the following table when entering new rooms. We have the room table. This is what's in the room. We have the room shape shape of the room that we're in. We have a d4 for doors, and we can draw them facing any direction that we want. Um, it's kind of useful so that we can make it uh, our dungeon fit on the page. So yeah, the way I like to do this is I like to start by rolling for the room shape. So we've got a five. The shape is a corridor, so we immediately um, move into a corridor. So there's a hallway. And how the next thing I like to do is roll for doors. This has four. It has two doors. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw this corridor coming down this way, and there's a door on either side. And it ends right here at the end of this of of this you know kind of short 
corridor. We have two doors on either side. Now I want to ask the question, what does this corridor look like? So the, the stone entrance, the entryway, was just a, a stone room. It kind of felt, you know, like it was, you know, closing in on card units. But I want to see if there's any more information we can get about the crypts that we're entering. The catacomb, 48. So this this room is lacking. Okay. 15. It is lacking and, da and it is damaged. So this is a... Um, so it's still stone. We'll say that this is a stone corridor, but there's nothing. It's bare, and there are like chips in the wall. It looks it looks like ruins. Um, yeah, this is a really really old catacomb. Nothing too interesting. However, there is something in the room. Maybe maybe there's something in the room. Let's roll on the room table. This is a d6. We have five. You face a tough monster. So we <laughs> so we enter the corridor in standing. Across from us at the other end of the corridor is, if you kill it, the room is explored, by the way, is, let's roll a d4, is a, this is a three, tough monsters, a Medusa, no, not a Medusa, okay, so I'm going to write Medusa, it's a, it's a barren room, stone, and there's a Medusa, you know, snakes coming out of the head of this of this horrible, uh, horrible looking creature. Medusa is four points, does d6 damage, and has 10 HP. And most importantly, after the fight, there is a one in six chance that you are petrified. Now, this is whether you win or lose this fight. This is we have the cloak. We have the cloak of invisibility. All right, now that is that is incredible. So Cargunt sees Cargunt sees the uh, sees the Medusa, and maybe I don't know. Does it? I didn't think to put the cloak on. Does okay. So we have to ask the question. Cargunt has this cloak of invisibility that he found in the room. Did he think to put it on? Has he already put it on? I'm going to say no. Um, I didn't say that he was putting it on. So Cargunt has not. I'll make it 50-50. Did Cargoon to immediately put the cloak on? I'm gonna say that it's unlikely that he that he thought to do so. Okay, that is a one. That is an exceptional yes. Cargoon immediately put the invisibility cloak on when he found it. Whew, that's great. Thanks, Cargoon. Good job. Um, yeah, that is the. Th this is the perk of having an oracle available like Mythic. And as I mentioned before, the one-page Mythic is pretty solid it's pretty robust like think about all the details we have about this world just from what we have on the one page so yeah that is really exciting okay so cargoons did indeed remember to put on um, his invisibility cloak it is covering him and he sees a medusa in the hallway now i'm curious in this bare hallway what is the medusa doing um why is it here? Now, Dark Fort does not give any kind of explanation for why anything is anywhere. Um, it's very likely that the it's very likely that the reasonings are mostly nonsensical, or that's just not really the point of the game is to dungeon crawl, not to like worry about what's where and why. But I just want to see if Mythic will give us something uh, that makes sense. So, what what is the Medusa doing as we enter the room? This bare corridor, seventy six. It is. NPC, ooh, 50, 56, good NPC. Okay, so there is a, there is a good NPC. Let's get a description for the NPC. 39, heavy. There is a soldier. There is some kind of warrior character. I'm going to say a, some kind of guard or soldier, maybe there's a nearby town. We might be near, let's see, if we're in the dying campaign setting, there are. there's a large city called Galgenbeck, I think. Um, I'm not an expert at Merkborg's campaign setting by uh, any stretch of the imagination, but maybe we're near one of these large um, cities, or maybe we're even under Galgenbeck, and a, a, a city guard is down here in this corridor, and the Medusa is feasting on this person. This person is already dead, we're going to say, 
Medusa is feasting on it and is, is distracted. Cargunt is going to edge around the Medusa and make his way down the hallway to one of the two doors. Cargunt is sweating. Um, again, his, his resolve is once again tested. He has to be quiet as he's, you know, moving through the corridor. But he's able to sneak past the Medusa and uh, round a corner into another room. So let's, you know, arbitrarily we'll go in, a, let's say, my left direction. Let's roll for another room shape. That was really tense. Oh, we get the Medusa's points, I should say, and we explored the room. So a Medusa is worth four points. This is excellent. Cargunt is now upgrading from three points to seven. And the number of rooms that we've explored is now two. All right. So seven points and two rooms. And our Cloak of Invisibility was used one time out of the two that we get. So we can sneak past one more monster with our Cloak of Invisibility. Okay, wow. That was tense. Let's roll for another room shape. That's going to be a 2d6. We're going to follow that up with a d4 for the number of rooms. Okay, six. This is a square room, d4, with two doors. A square with two doors. Okay, we're coming off the left side. So I'm going to say that this is like a three by three, a large square room. No, I mean, not like huge, just three by three, square. And let's have... One door going to the left and one door going down, or I should say south. Which, from your perspective, uh, that looks like north. Okay, we'll say one one doorway facing the north um, and one facing the uh, east. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, now what is in this room? We have a riddling soothsayer. Okay, so we enter the room. Cargun enters the room. He's wearing a cloak of invisibility, and there's a there's a, a man in the room. Let's describe the person who is in the room. Okay, uh, discover meaning description. So 61, this person is mysterious. Okay, so he's a soothsayer. Um, someone that can, you know, kind of predict the future. And he just has this mysterious vibe about him that makes perfect sense. Let's ask, what is he doing in this room? Okay, 70. 70 even. Uh, he's doing something mundane. Let's get um, let's get a description of the mundane thing that he's doing. See, that I just bouncing back and forth between the discover meeting tables. Um, you know, actually, something mundane that he's doing in this room. Okay, rather, let's describe the room that he's in. Let's get a, a discover meaning description of the room that he's in. So this is a 19. That gives us dark. Okay, so it's another dark room. He's doing something mundane in a dark room. And 89. It is a simple room. Okay, so we're not getting exactly what he's doing. We know this is a, a dark and kind of simple room. He is doing something mundane. Let's get another action word. 99. Uncertain. We can't, Cargunt just cannot make out what he's doing in the dark. He is working on something. Is he, is he at a table? Is he, is he working on something at a table in the side of the simple room? I don't know. Let's make it 50-50 and see. 74, that is a no. He is, uh, we, we have no idea what the soothsayer is doing. Um, but as he enters the room, as Cargoon enters the room, does he notice Cargoon entering the room? Now, the, the Cloak of Invisibility says that we can move past two monsters. Avoid D4 fights while acquiring all the monster points. Does this count as a fight? I don't know. I don't know the answer. So basically how a, soothe, a riddling soothsayer works is you roll a die. On an odd result, you solve the riddle and may choose to receive either 10 silver or 3 points. On an even result, a mind-shattering shockwave deals D4 damage, ignoring armor. 
If you survive, the room is explored. Okay, you know what? This is a chance at silver. I feel like there aren't a ton of chances at that. Or it's a chance at points, which is also beneficial. So I'm going to say that rather than worrying about whether this is a fight that Cargoon can sneak past or not, I'm going to say that Cargoon pulls aside his cloak to, to say something to the man. He, he, you know, he says something along the lines of, like, who goes there? Um, and the man turns, and he's very creepy, he's mysterious looking, and he rattles off this... Uh, this magic uh, riddle that would boggle, you know, the it's like an attack. Is the way that I envision um, the the soothsayer is he he turns and he says something so cryptic with this kind of like magical force behind it, this this riddle that if you understand what he's talking about, then he's almost powerless, and um, you know maybe he'll reward you to not kill him or something. But if uh, I don't know, if, if you can't solve the riddle, then it just, it deals damage to your mind. So the soothsayer turns to us as, you know, we, we speak to him, and he rattles off this riddle about something 35 full 57 modern 46 incomplete something full modern and incomplete what is modern in the world of okay so let's maybe focus on one of these something full like the moon incomplete it's a it's it's incomplete full moon modern okay so maybe we'll, we'll just sometimes the sometimes the combination of words when it's when the words are random it can be hard to kind of link them together um, and you can if you if you enjoy interpreting odd uh, you know, strings of words. When you're playing Mythic on your own, you 100% can take all the time that you want um, to figure out what interpretation really closely fits the the words that you um, receive. However, you just you just want to be careful not to let that um, process slow down your gameplay considerably. Um, I know that I personally can get stuck on a crazy meaning, um, not really knowing what it means. So. Uh, in that case, the one of the most important rules to know is the I don't know rule. Let's see if it's uh, here. Okay, so it doesn't look like Mythic explicitly, the one page Mythic explicitly uh, calls out an I don't know rule. It actually has this um, get more words uh, rule at the end. But basically, the I don't know rule uh, that comes from, you know, um, the Mythic uh, Game Master emulator is that if you get a random event um, that just doesn't make sense to you, you, you can you can just throw up your hand and say, I don't know what that means, and you can skip it and you can move on, because it's not worth bogging your game down and slowing it down um, you know, by spending too much extra time on interpreting um, a string of words like that. So Now, uh, the one-page mythic actually says to keep rolling for words until an interpretation comes clear. And I imagine that if you roll new words that make more sense to you than old words, um, you can just toss the old words out. Um, and use whatever whatever the first word or set of words are that um, kind of you know inspires some meaning to you. That is when you stop and you go with uh, that kind of first thought. Um, yeah. So in this case, I'm going to go with uh, a riddle about uh, the moon. Let's see if Cargunt is able to solve the riddle. So uh, once again, we're going to roll a d6. Um, well, you can roll any die, but I don't know. For combat, I roll a d6, so I want to roll a d6. Odd result, we solve the riddle. Um, and an even result, we, we don't and we take damage. All right, so let's hope for an odd result. It's a two. Cargunt is not able to um, solve the riddle of the, the soothsayer's words, rack his mind, um, and he's, he's going to take D4 damage um, as a result of this. Let's go ahead and roll for damage. Okay, it's a two. So Cargunt is going to take two damage. This is going to lower his HP from 15 down to 13. So he kind of like stumbles against the wall, um, holding his head. He's kind of, uh, he's rattled by this. And I, you know, I don't know what, what happens next. It does, when he, I don't know, maybe he, he takes a moment to kind of shake the cobwebs um, out of his head. He's, he's rattled by this, uh, this mental attack that he's certainly not used to um does the soothsayer just bail i think that's i think that's very likely let's go ahead and roll for it all right so um 91 that is an exceptional no okay so on uh on that note
Is that an exceptional no? Very, very likely. That is just a no. That is not an exceptional no. It's just a no. No, the soothsayer does does not. Uh, he doesn't just bail. Um, I don't know what he does. Let's let's figure out what does the soothsayer do next. Let's roll for an action. We get seventy four. That is, he does something negative. And what? This is a sixty. I can't see that. Let's re-roll it. A sixty six. Ooh, that is a random event leave okay so the soothsayer does something negative and then he leaves i i think what he does is he he maybe he yells into the next room for some for help from some kind of creature and then he bails so no he didn't just bail first he had to shout for help um let's see is there a does a monster um come come through the door of the of the next room i'm going to say that that is very likely we get a 76 that is a no it's not a monster but something negative um happens i'm gonna say that if the soothsayer didn't shout uh at a monster and call a monster into the room i'm gonna say the alternate interpretation of this is that he he takes a swing at cargoons <laughs> this uh this this riddler takes a swing at cargoons as he exits um the room we have a rule for unarmed damage let's see if i can find it it's a d4 minus one if unarmed um so we're going to say that cargoon he's you know rattled he's kind of stumbling against the wall um he doesn't really have a, a chance to defend himself the negative thing is that the the soothsayer strikes him unarmed before he leaves the room so d4 minus one that is a three he takes an additional two damage so our health is lowered to 11 from the soothsayer as he exits the room and then a random event occurs and we are going to end the session on this note cargunt has just been you know stunned and and <laughs> i don't know uh, hooked in the jaw by <laughs> the soothsayer um, before he uh runs out of the room and and now something something else happens something random um what happens next i don't know and neither do you but if you uh join me in the next session we will find out together and at the same time thank you so much for watching and until the next episode